In yeah, tutorial, tutorial 9, nine. part 2, we're going to start with this tnyscript.js file and add more JavaScript commands to this file. Now, if you didn't delete the window alert from before, we can go ahead and do that here. That was just for testing out our file. And then I also want us to go back and look at the TNY clock HTML file and specifically look at this item that's on my line 42 where I have a div element with an ID of date now and then it has a closed div tag over here. What we're going to do in just a moment is in JavaScript we're going to refer to all of this between the opening and closing div tags as the inner HTML property of, um, of this div element that has this particular ID. And we're going to be able to change this to what we want it to be. And eventually we'll change it to the actual current date and time um, based on functions built in with JavaScript. So just remember how that's structured. This is in the HTML file. But then we're going to go back to that script file and add a code below our comments. We're going to first add another comment so we can know what we're doing. And we're going to say that we're going to display the current date and time. So we just added the comment. And then we're going to type a command that starts with document, period. So this is saying we're going to start the document. And then within the document, we want to use this object called get element uh, by ID. And it has to be spelled correctly or it won't work. And then after the by ID, we're going to have in parentheses and inside double quotes, the ID of that div section we just looked at, which was the ID was date now with that capital N. Be sure you have the capital N in there. And then after the parentheses, we'll add a period, enter HTML. You can see the property come up in the list. And so all of this is basically referring to the inner HTML code that's between the beginning and ending div tags of that section that was that had the ID of date now that was on our document that's going to be running this script. Okay, so we have that set first. We were wanting here to set that equal to, and we're just going to have a temporary string it's set equal to right now. We will be modifying this later. But we just want it to be set equal to m slash d slash y, and then um, a line break code in HTML, and then h colon m colon s. And then we have to end every JavaScript command with a semicolon. So we have all that command there. So this should replace the, the div section that has the ID of date now. It should replace the Enter HTML code with this string here, and when we reload the page in the browser, we should be able to see the effect of that. So I'm going to save the script, go back to my <coughs> browser, and for now, I'm going to get rid of the developer tools um, <clears throat> with F12. And then we're, what we affected was this part up in the upper left corner that is currently showing an actual date and time, but we've just changed it to show it a placeholder text of MDY and HMS. So I'm going to reload and see if this right here changes. So I'm reloading and it does change right here. So that's all that we've done at the moment. Let's go back to our script file. And now we're going to add another comment that says what we're going to do, which now we're going to display the time left until New Year's Eve. And then after that comment, we're going to have four more commands. Document, get element by ID. And then we're going to use four different IDs that we saw in that original HTML file. We're going to use first the ID of days, and we're going to set its text content equal to the string of DD. Um, and then a semicolon. Now I'm just going to pause here for a second. I'm going to look back over at this TNY clock HTML file. 
what we're doing now is in this countdown section right in here. We're looking at these four div sections that have ID of days, hours, minutes, and seconds. And we're setting, like right now, they actually have numbers um, assigned. But we're going to make, instead of 58 for days, we're going to change that to a DD. We're going to change the hours to HH and then MM and SS. So let's go back to our JavaScript file. And, and basically, we can copy this command three more times. Oops. There we go. Press enter between each one. And then we can just edit it. So we'll have days, then HRS. The next one down is MINS, and then SECS. And then change these string contents as well. We have DD, then HH, then MM, and SS. So then let's save this script file, reload our web page, and what we're changing is this down here, the countdown clock, where right now it says 58, 10, 14, and 48. We, we're going to change that. So I reload, and now we see the, the letters that we've assigned. Let's go back to our script file. And now we're going to go just after this first big comment block and add another little section with a comment that says store the current date and time and we're going to create a variable to store the current date and time that we can then use in other commands and so a variable in javascript starts with var to, to let it know that we're about to declare a variable and then we can give it any name we want as long as it has no spaces and there are some naming rules your book goes over just a little bit but we're going to set a variable called current day equal to, and then we're going to use the JavaScript command new that creates a new object. And specifically, we want a new object that is a date type object. And so there's a built-in date object in JavaScript. And what we have to do is supply in parentheses and inside quotes the actual day and time that we want to set. So we, we're going to set just for testing purposes we're going to set May 23rd, 2018, and then a space, and then 14 colon 35 colon 05. We're going to set that day and time, and that's just so that we can test when we do the rest of this script that it's all calculating correctly, and then late at the very end, we'll set this to the actual current date. Um, but we have a, a specific date and time added. We have to end that command with a semicolon, like we do always in JavaScript. Now, immediately after we declare that variable called current day, we're going to declare two more variables, one just to represent the date part, and we're going to call that date str for date string, and the s is capital. And we're going to set that equal to, then we're going to refer to that variable we just created, current day, dot, and then we're going to apply a method that's built in to dates, which is to locale date string. And it should come up in the list. So, and then we end it with parentheses and a semicolon. And so what this is saying is that take the current date value, current day value, whatever we just set that to, and get just the date part and make it a string that, that conforms to local conventions. Remember, dates look differently and are written differently around the world, but we want it to, to be put into a string format like we use here in uh, the United States. And then we're going to do something similar with the variable for time string. Again, the S is capital, and we want that to be based on the current day but set to locale time string and end it with empty parentheses and a semicolon. So with these two commands, we now have a date string variable that, that is storing the value of the current date and then the time string variable that is storing the value of the current time based on what was assigned to, to current day. And now we're going to go down and where it has date now, we were 
that um, initially we were just using some placeholder text, but we're going to change this now to show instead of all of instead of the MDY part. Actually, let me just get rid of all that. Okay, so after the equal sign, we're going to use the date stream variable because we want the date to be first. But then along with that, we want a string that consists of just the code for a line break in HTML. And so a string has to have the double quotes at the beginning and end. We have that around that line break HTML code. And then added to the end of that, we want the time stream part. So we don't put quotes around the variable names. So date string and time stream should be um, not have quotes around it, but we do put quotes around the part of the text that's just the HTML code. So all of this now should get assigned to the date uh, or to the inner HTML that, that is part of that date now ID. Let's save this script, reload our web page, and see if this changes up in the left corner to show the date, the, the, the test date that we're working with, which is May 23rd, 2018, and the time that it was set. And notice it did change the time to show um, you know, AM and PM, and where we had originally set the time to be 14 um, using military time, but it converted it based on the style settings that were in the, um, in, in, in the style sheet files.